Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss the concept of Kuznets curve. Move to this concept, we can see that this curve is of inverted U shape. The shape of this curve would be inverted U shape. And what is the relationship which is being told in this curve? This curve would show the case of economic growth and inequality situation. The concept of Kuznets curve is being developed by a very famous economist, Simon Kuznets. Let's consider the details of the very same concept. This is Simon Kuznets. He was a Russian American development economist as well as a statistician. This person is a very famous economist who has been awarded the 1971 Nobel Memorial Prize in economics for his research on economic growth. And he has set the standard for national income accounting. And this has helped to develop ideas of Keynesian economics and the study of econometrics. Moving to Simon Kuznets and Kuznets curve. As you could understand, the concept of Kuznets curve has got its name from the propounder of the very same concept, that is Simon Kuznets. And this particular curve hypothesis that industrializing nations could experience a rise and subsequent decline when it comes to what is known as income inequality. And it tells about the rural labor migration to urban areas. It says after the rural labor migration to urban areas, it becomes something called social mobility comes here. And as a result of the same, what happens is inequality. Let's consider more about it. So coming to the Kuznets curve, the context of the development of the very same, we could see that Whenever a particular nation undergoes something like industrialization, the nation's economy will be shifting towards urban centers because in it is usually in urban areas that you go for setting up of industries. And as a result of the same, there can be something called migration. And these two internal migration, people will be moving from one part of the nation to the other part of the nation they are not moving to any other nation but within the nation they would be moving from one from one part to the to another part okay and this migration is mostly done by the farming sector or the farmers and why are they moving because in if they are working in the agriculture sector they will be getting less wage in agriculture sector since they are having less wage in agriculture sector they would be looking for a better paying jobs and as a result of industrialization, they could see that industries would be giving them better wages. And since these industries are mostly located in urban areas, these people will be moving from rural to urban. That is, farmers move from rural to urban areas. Okay. So this will be leading to something called a rural urban inequality situation which will lead to a rural urban inequality gap. Okay, so also with respect to population since farmers are moving from rural areas to urban areas we can have a reduction in rural population. Rural population would be falling. 
and what about urban population urban population on the other hand would increase this would increase okay and this is what a kusnets curve is having set the context of kusnets curve let's see how it looks like and what it means etc as you could see you are measuring income per capita along the x axis and you are measuring inequality along the y axis okay and if you look at the curve the shape of the curve is inverted u and this curve explains that till this particular point what you could see what is the corresponding x and y axis for this particular point so this is a income and this is a inequality level isn't it so it says inequality is expected to decrease when a certain level of average income is set to have and the process of industrialization is full swing so this is that particular point from which you can have a reduction in inequality so till this point what happens is that if you look take this particular point on the kusnets curve you can have a uh, this much level of income or this much level of growth and after that with respect to inequality you are having this much again if you take this point on kusnets curve you can have a rise in income or growth and the resulting inequality would also be more what about this particular point again you can see that at this particular point your income or growth in the economy is increasing also your inequality is increase but what happens after this particular point after this particular point you can see that just take the case of uh, this point on kusnets curve so for that the growth or the income will be here and the corresponding inequality level would be something here that means the inequality even though it is increasing here it is falling here right so Kusnets always believe that inequality would follow an inverted U shape. It will be rising initially, and then it will be falling with the increase in the income per capita of a nation. So, Kusnets had gone for two important explanation to his famous contribution of Kusnets curve, and one of the important explanation is with respect to the migration this is rural urban migration we could see that attracted to higher wages in urban areas farmers would be migrating from agriculture sector to industrial sector or they would be migrating from rural area to urban areas isn't it and this is specifically meant for job and that is the second thing that he is saying and in both the above given explanation inequality will decrease after the 50 percentage of the shift this is important i am not saying that inequality will decrease every every time no it is after 50 percent of the shift development will be proceeding it will be increasing so up from there onwards the inequality would be falling okay and having said about kusnets curve we are going to see the concept of kusnets ratio and what does it it shows the ratio of income going to the highest earning household to the income going to the lowest earning household you have highest earning household Highest earning household case. This is to 
the lowest earning household. Okay, and this is commonly measured either the lowest twenty percentage or the lowest forty percentage, etc., of the income. Now, what are the applications of Krishna's curve? Krishna's curve curve has got its application when it comes to environmental economics as well. So, when it comes to environmental Krishna's curve, this is a modification of the original Krishna's curve. It's a modification. and this is being taken the environment of business curve is being taken to chart of the rise and decline in pollution levels in an industrializing nation so you can see that initial periods of industrialization during the initial periods of industrialization pollution will be more but what happens after some point after that with industrialization what happened pollution level will come down why this happened because of government policies because of sophisticated modernized technology etc so this is what is called the environmental business curve even though business curve has a lot many applications that doesn't mean that business curve is free from criticisms the concept of business curve has got a lot many criticism from various angles it has been told that the u shape of the christmas curve does not represent progress in development of individual nations so they were taking uh, something called the latin america and most of the data in the christmas curve is something which is gathered by latin america which is a middle income region with a history of inequality and also the other point another point uh, with which the questioner's curve is being criticized is with respect to other variables we are just taking in questioner's curve we are just taking uh, the per capita income or income per capita and inequality but what about the influence of other variables whenever we take into consideration the other variables it is found that the u shape of the questioner's curve is disappearing and for the very same reason christmas curve is being criticized again again moving to the validity aspects of christmas curve this too is being questioned the rapid economic rise of japan south korea china singapore etc between 1965 and 1990 so this is always called a east asian miracle and connecting a christmas curve with this we have to think whether we could apply christmas curve here that was another point which has been used by various economists to critically consider the concept of christmas curve and uh, during this time we could also see that the manufacturing as well as export the manufacturing sector that means the industrial sector as well as the export it grew quickly the both of these have grown very quickly as well as powerfully and during the very same period life expectancy was increasing this was increasing and population levels or people who were living in absolute poverty had fallen this had fallen okay again this was another important aspect which was being used to criticize the christmas curve concept and these kinds of development as i told you had always contradicted with the theory of christmas curve especially because the economic development of 
East Asian economies that disturb the that distributed the benefits of economic growth among the population when the theories stated that rapid capital accumulation could lead to an increase or rise in inequality and even now many economists are seeing they are collecting data and with empirical evidences they are testing whether we could establish a clear cut validity of business curve in real world the in the present scenario so that is it about business curve thank you for watching you can like share and subscribe to this channel for more videos and you can also join our telegram group uh, to discuss your doubts the link of the same would be given in the description box also you can download our app from uh, play store as well as apple store again the link of the same would be provided in the description box you will be able to get study materials and the pbqs from there so that's all about today you can like share and subscribe for more videos thank you for watching